Hello everyone. So today we will be discussing about the most seen condition in the physiotherapy and the orthopedic OPDs that is frozen shoulder. So before getting into the main topic, let us have a gist about the anatomy. So as we all know, the shoulder joint is made up of glenoid fossa and head of humerus. So glenoid fossa and head of humerus forms the shoulder joint and this shoulder joint is enclosed in a connective tissue called the capsule. In frozen shoulder, this capsule is inflamed, thickened and tends to become tight. As we can see in this demonstration, the red part that is the capsule which is inflamed. So this inflamed, tightened and thickened capsule makes the movement difficult and painful. And this is the normal shoulder joint and this is the thick and inflamed shoulder joint. Moving on, we will see the exact definition of the frozen shoulder. So frozen shoulder also called as adhesive capsulitis and periarthritis shoulder is a condition of unknown etiology where the glenohumeral joint becomes stiff and painful because of the loss of resilience of the joint capsule. In this condition, both active and passive movements are restricted. So this point is very, very important as this helps us to differentiate between the frozen shoulder pain and the normal shoulder pain. In frozen shoulder pain, both active and passive movements are restricted, whereas in normal shoulder pain, both movements aren't restricted. So this is the key point for the diagnosis of frozen shoulder. Risk factors. So before getting into the risk factors, if you see the pictures demonstrated, you can see that the man is doing the same movement in both affected and unaffected hand. And we can clearly visualize that the effect in the hand, the man is not able to complete the full range of motion, whereas in the unaffected hand, he is able to complete full range of motion. Now, coming to risk factors, there are basically three major risk factors. That is sex and age, immobility, and third is systemic disorders. When we talk about age and sex, studies have proven that females are more prone to get the frozen shoulder, especially in their fourth decade. Immobility or reduced mobility. Longer period of immobilization or decreased mobilization leads to a stiff and frozen shoulder. Systemic diseases, diabetes, hypo, hyperthyroidism, everything contributes to the worsening of the frozen shoulder or the occurrence of the frozen shoulder. Stages and clinical presentations. There are three different stages and in all the three different stages, the presentation of the patient differs. So it is quite easy for us to know which stage the patient is in. The first stage being freezing stage, which lasts for about three to nine months. In this stage, pain is immense and there is limited range of motion. The second stage, that is the frozen stage, lasts for about nine to 15 months. And in this stage, pain is reduced subsequently or comparatively and stiffness is increased. And coming to the last stage, that's the thawing stage or the third stage, it lasts for 15 to 24 months and beyond. In this stage, since from the stage two, the pain has comparatively reduced. So by the third stage, the pain is completely gone and the range of motion starts improving. Movements restricted. So as we saw previously, there were some movements which were restricted. But the main three movements which are maximum affected are the external rotation, the abduction and internal rotation. External rotation being the maximally affected followed by abduction and internal rotation. That means the limitation is maximum in external rotation, then abduction and then internal rotation. Now coming to diagnostic tests. Clinical diagnosis plays the major key role for diagnosing frozen shoulders. We can definitely go for other tests like MRI, X-rays or other investigations rather, but then we also should know how to clinically diagnose the case.
or the condition. So the main keyhole for this is the app play scratch test. In this test, we test the abduction and external rotation that are maximally affected as per the previous slide as what we have learned. So we ask the patient in the first figure, we ask the patient to externally rotate the hand and see up to which level the patient can bring the hand. If the patient is able to bring the hand till the represented photo says, then he or she is not suffering from any frozen shoulder condition. The same goes to the abduction. We ask the patient to abduct the hand as shown in the picture. If the patient is unable to do so, then we diagnose the patient as the frozen shoulder case. So this test is the gold standard test for diagnosing, clinically diagnosing frozen shoulder. Moving on, as I said, there are other investigations which are as follows, X-ray, MRIs and arthrography. Coming to X-rays, X-rays are seen very normally as it is a capsular condition and it cannot be seen on an X-ray. But what we can appreciate in the X-ray is that if there is any secondary condition which is causing the pain such as calcification or osteoporosis or osteoarthritis, etc. If there is any secondary cause which is causing the pain, we will get to know it in the X-ray. Moving to MRI. In the MRI, the key point, the main golden key point is the axillary recess. I am just marking here, the axillary recess is the main key point in the MRI. So what is an axillary recess? Axillary recess, it is a pouch in the inferior aspect of the joint. If this is the joint and this is the inferior aspect, so that is where this axillary pouch lies. It is beneath the inferior, inferior glenohumeral ligament. It is basically a pouch and when there is inflammation and fibrosis like in frozen shoulder, the area is comparatively reduced or absent which says that if there is an inflammation condition, the normal pouch which tends to appear like this gets reduced or gets absent and you cannot see the pouch in the MRI. That is the main key axillary recess in the MRI. Arthrography is done very rarely and it is not considered one of the major diagnostic tests. Moving on to the treatment aspect. In treatment aspect, the main point which we need to keep in mind, the frozen shoulder itself is self-limiting. But we also need to keep this in mind that it may take years and months and years together to recover. And the recovery starts at the third stage, that is the thawing stage. So the first point is self-limiting. Anyways, we even have two more options, that is conservative and surgical. The conservative management considers or has medical management and physiotherapy management as well. And the surgical management is not much required but in extensive cases where you have no other go or where the conservative management has failed, we go for the surgical management. Now coming to medical and surgical management. Medical management consists of analgesic, steroid injection, joint distension, shoulder manipulation. It sounds very weird, but it's very simple. Analgesics. Analgesics basically consist of NSAIDs. That is nothing but non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which helps reduce the inflammation as it suggests in the name and pain. Steroid injections. Steroid injections, for example, hydrocortisone is given intra-articularly into the joint, again, to reduce the pain. Joint distension. Okay, I would give a small example. When you have something and you leave your plate for a longer period of time, there are particles which get stick on the plate. So in order to remove that, you just keep it under the tap water with the force of the tap water more and you clear out the debris or whatever is stuck. That's the same concept which we put into the shoulder part. So basically, we don't inject the tap water here. We inject the saline. So the saline is infused in the joint to break the adhesions and make and loosen the capsule. Now coming to shoulder manipulation, I'll be talking to you about it in the next slide. Surgical management is again arthroscopic surgery and arthroscopic debridement, which I'll be talking to you in the next slide. Now coming to MUA. MUA is manipulation under anesthesia. 
in this the person or the patient is given general anesthesia and his shoulder is manipulated in all the directions that means his shoulder has been moved in all the directions to loosen the adhesions to loosen the tightened capsule and to break down the adhesions arthroscopy as we know arthroscopy is being well flourished these days because it is number one minimally invasive technique so an arthroscope is introduced into your joint which is minimally invasive and with that it is used to break down the adhesion so basically you have a keyhole surgery it is also called as keyhole surgery because it does not have much of cutting and getting all these incisions none so it's just like a keyhole which just goes in and comes out so arthroscopy is one of the technique now coming to the last part of our presentation that is the physiotherapy treatment so physiotherapy treatment is done in three different aspects three different stages so the first stage consists of shoulder mobilization that is very gentle shoulder mobilization muscle releases acupuncture dry needling and kinesiology taping etc so the first stage basically we concentrate on reduction of pain as we remember in stage 1 of frozen shoulder the pain is immense so in the first stage of treatment all we concentrate is on reducing the pain modalities like tens and all is used to reduce the pain hot packs tens and hot packs applied before and after the treatment gives you a immense or gives you good results moist heat used in conjunction with stretching can help improve the muscle extensibility so in the first phase of rehab we basically concentrate on the pain and maintaining the extensibility of the muscle moving on to the second part of rehab in the second part of rehab what we concentrate more on is regaining back the lost range of motion we do that by doing certain shoulder joint mobilization now what is mobilization mobilization is a physiotherapy technique which is used to, to increase the range of motion for example if i need to increase the range of motion of abduction i will definitely give an inferior glide so mobilization is always done between the surface of the joints it is always done between the glenoid fossa and the head of humerus in this case so mobilization technique changes with which movement you need to get into or which movement you need to concentrate on or which movement you need to increase the range of motion so the second phase mainly concentrates on mobilization and increase the range of motion because as we know in the second stage the pain has comparatively reduced and the stiffness increases so in that case we need to make sure that the stiffness doesn't worsen and at the same time we need to make sure that the pain doesn't worsen up so we need to make sure that we don't load the shoulder joint more there's another thing which we concentrate on that is mobilization with movement mobilization is done in the by the therapist and once the patient goes home we need to make sure until the next session of the patient he doesn't lose the range of motion which we have gained from the mobilization so we make sure we give him some exercises to maintain the range of motion which is gained by the mobilization techniques and the last phase of rehab this includes strengthening this includes increase the range of motion this includes loosening the adhesions and all everything one pack in one it's like that so you need to concentrate on strengthening the muscles you need to concentrate on range of motion you need to concentrate on the frequency and if the person is an athlete or getting back into that sport so your training in the third phase have to be very goal limited it should be goal limited if the person is a badminton player you should concentrate more on the actions or the movements which you need to be concentrating for him to get back into the sport so third phase of the rehab is more of goal oriented goal limited and that's how the third phase of the rehab is done so the third phase of rehab you can use pulleys you can use wheels you can use theraband exercises you have a lot many exercises to gain the strength with so here are a few exercises which i'll be showing to you and just remember physiotherapy is the most effective during the thawing phase or the third so these are some of the exercises this is the shoulder wheel exercises this is the finger ladder exercise 
this is the pulley exercise this is the mobilization exercise so what we can see is that all the exercises are assisted here this exercises can be even given in stage 2 of the rehab but we need to make sure that we don't strain the patient as i again said this is the finger ladder exercise demonstration and this exercise is called as pendulum exercise where the patient is doing the exercise with gravity with the help of gravity or gravity assisted so that the load on the shoulder joint does not increase so these are the few exercises which you can give to your patients apart from that you can modify according to the needs of the patient and according to the patient load according to your load how you can well train the patient so it all depends on many factors these are few basic exercises which can be given the last thing which i want to tell is the biofeedback biofeedback has been doing an immense amount of uh, success i would tell you what is biofeedback in just two lines for example this is a mirror placed in front of the person and imagine this person is doing some other movement like abduction or flexion or extension with both the hands that is the affected and the unaffected hand what you can see is that the person sees in the mirror and does the movement so the person's brain perceives oh this hand isn't doing it properly so i need to make sure this hand does it more properly and the person tries to straighten the affected side i'm talking in case of flexion so the patient tries to flex his hand more and try to make it more proper so that is how biofeedback or mirror therapy has been doing wonders in the treatment of frozen shoulder so with this i would like to end my presentation and remember prevention equals to shoulder movements every day at least some amount of shoulder mo movements done every day can prevent you from getting into this condition called frozen shoulder thank you